What is up, everyone? Welcome back to The Awakened Catholic Show. This is not your grandmother's Catholic talk show. I am your host, Nick Delatore. With me today, I have a really special person um, that is here actually local to The Awakened Catholic Studios. She's in the area, and there is just so much cool stuff happening in her life. It's really an amazing story we're going to be hearing about of... Um, of transformation, but like going from pain and like challenges and things that really nobody should ever have to go through to like the way that God completely redeems and, and can do amazing things through those challenges. And, and Hannah is just doing some really cool stuff. I can't wait to share about Hannah. Thanks for Thank being you. here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor, honestly. Well, the honor is all <laughs> mine and for the viewer and listener. Uh, all of that stuff's coming up right after this. I don't know uh, if you've ever watched The Awakened Catholic Show, but um, The Awakened Catholic Show is is the premier Catholic talk show in uh, in the world. I mean, there is no bigger, more viewed, more listened to Catholic talk show than The Awakened Catholic Talk Show, and yet the honor is ours to have you here with wow. us, Hannah. Wow. That's that's intense. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, totally kidding. I mean, I guess, I don't know, you decide, viewer or listener, uh, but... I just wanted to share with you a couple things before we get into this super important conversation, um, and that is that if you enjoy The Awakened Catholic Show or any of the shows here on Awakened Catholic, then you should check out The Awakened Nation. The Awakened Nation is a group of people like yourself who um, decide that the mission of Awakened Catholic is something that they want to partner with. If you want to partner with Awakened Catholic in this mission of, of bringing um, good news and truth and beauty to people um, through this digital online medium and also our events like we do all kinds of stuff guys you should peruse our website for a second and just see everything we're doing and if you want to partner with us in that and make awakened catholic part of your tithing um, it could make a huge difference to us even the smallest giving level that you'll find listed there can make a huge difference uh, to this mission and the things that we can do um, to bring the gospel to this modern world so check out awakencatholic.org slash donate to learn more about the awaken nation and join additionally members of the awaken nation get exclusive content um, and that exclusive content as well as all of the free content like this show and all the other shows as well as a music library as well as a prayer library as well as just a bunch of stuff is available on the awaken catholic app and if you don't have the awaken catholic app you should get the awaken catholic app by searching for Awakened Catholic on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Um, and also, you know, if you don't have a smartphone, uh, if you're you know, living in the Stone Ages, you can just use a web browser uh, and just type in theawakenapp.io. How you're using a web browser in the Stone Ages, I do not know. How you're watching this show or listening to it if you're in the Stone Ages, I also do not know. Maybe that wasn't the best example to bring up. But anyways, all of that having been said, Hannah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You recently were a guest on Peter Range's radio show. Yep. Um, and when he told me why he had you as a guest, because I had met you before and I used to work with your mom when I ran the Office of Marriage and Family Life. Yep. Um, your mom is a, a Catholic uh, clinical psychologist and just yep. such an uh, a, or a therapist. I don't know. Are those all synonymous? Is um, that... I don't know if I'm the best person. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, she helps people in the head. Yeah. Um, and she's Catholic doing it. And mm -hmm. she's just awesome. Great lady. And so I, I got to know her a lot working with her. And um, anyways, when Peter shared with me why he had you on as a guest, I, I was blown away because I'd met you several times and never knew that you were doing this stuff. Um, and, it, you know, you are, are a part of a team of women that run um, a pro-life TikTok channel. Correct. Yeah. And it actually is killing it. And uh, you also personally run a pro-life Instagram account. Yep. And I just think, gosh, what a cool story. Like, what a great thing that you're doing that. And you have two daughters. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just kind of want to start from the beginning. Like, who, who was Hannah growing up? And how, how does someone become this <laughs> Hannah that's that's making waves in the pro-life movement, changing hearts online? Yeah. Okay. So... I grew up Catholic, um, you know, baptized, first communion, all that jazz. But getting into middle school, not like faith was not a priority. I was like, I'm too busy to get confirmed. Mm. So I didn't. I didn't get confirmed. Um, high school, like I considered myself an atheist mm. and um, getting into college, same same whole deal. Um, 
you know, and I had this friend who was Catholic and he told me about this like spiritual encounter he had with the Holy Spirit. And I was like, you know, I, I, I trust this guy, you know, he's a really good friend. He wouldn't lie to me. So this must be true. And I was like, okay, well maybe, maybe I need to revisit that, but it wasn't a priority still. So I'm in my freshman year of college and I get into this really bad relationship, just really bad, Mm. sexually abusive, physically Mm. abusive. And I find myself pregnant. And my first thought was I need to get rid of this problem, you know, as soon as possible. Like I need to make this go away. And so I start searching abortion facilities Mm. in the area. You know, I schedule an abortion. Um, Funny enough, I have a miraculous medal, always wore it just to make my mom happy. You know, I wore it because of my mom and um, not any spiritual reason. And then I uh, lost Mary when I found out I was pregnant. And then fast forward to, I then tell my mom I'm pregnant. She's, and I tell her that I'm going to get an abortion. She's obviously a little shocked and panicked. She says, you know, just go to a pregnancy center before you do anything. Like, just get your options. Like, let's not just like make a decision in haste. Mm -hmm. So I go to a pregnancy center. I'm talking with the lady and miraculous metal will come up eventually. I didn't just start that. No, I figured that there was going to, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, I go to the pregnancy center. I'm talking to the lady. She tells me all the, all the options and she's going over things. And by the way, she was amazing. Like felt super non-judgmental mm. and just like the one place I felt like people weren't telling me what to do, you know? And um, I remember she told me like, you know, if you do get an abortion, we have healing classes. We have, we offer here. And I was like, healing? Like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I'd ever like come across the idea that people regret their abortions. People have health effects, mental health effects. Like that was the first time I ever heard that. And I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? I leave that one. I'm like, you know, I'm still going to keep my appointment, my abortion appointment, but I'll come back for the ultrasound, you know, before I go. And I come back for the ultrasound and I, she's starting to like, you know, she finds my daughter and she's like, you know, there's your baby. And I, I was like, wow, that's like a baby. Like, I don't know what I imagined wow. thinking. Like I, maybe I thought I was going to see like nothing or like cells or something, but I was like, that's, that's a baby. Wow. And like, not only is that a baby, that's, that's my baby. And so that was like super huge. And I get back home that day and um, I'm like, I told my roommate, I was like, I think I'm going to have this baby. And not long after I found my medal, I just found, no I found Mary, I found Mary <laughs> in my room. And oh so my gosh. Um, that was really wild. Um, so yeah. And then like through my pregnancy, I just kind of I was like not really pro-life. I was like, oh, I wouldn't do it, but like I don't want to tell other people what to do. But throughout yeah. my pregnancy, like things just kept getting in my way. And I was like, you need to reevaluate this. You need to reevaluate like your position on this. And then my daughter was born. Her middle name is Mary. Oh, she nice. had just like such a heart for Mary, mm-hmm. like such a heart for Mary. And you know, she was just like every like image of her, she would carry around a little Mary figurine. I mean, just everything. And, um, you know, I decided to start going to church, not really because I really felt like I should go to church, but, um, I just started going to church and I remember I had this one encounter with God. And I, I mean, like when I was atheist, I was doing bad things. I mean, I was not in good position at all. I was doing drugs. I was with like the wrong people. I was getting in trouble legally. Mm. And, um, there's lots of situations in my life that they could have gone really, really bad or Mm -hmm. they could have gone a lot worse than they did. And I had, like, I was thinking about it one day and I had this overwhelming, like, a feeling of protection Hmm. and like, like you were being protected. Like I was being protected through all that. And like, it's like, God spoke to me. He's like, that was me. Like Mm. I had no, like, um, I had no like confusion about who it was. Like God just told me like, that was me the whole time. Like that was God. And so, you know, progressively, like my soul is being chipped away for, through my daughter, through going to church again. And like, then finally my mom's like, you know, you should, you should get confirmed. <laughs> and I was like, mm, I guess like, sure, whatever. I guess I've been doing this church thing for a little while. Maybe I should get confirmed. Still not really like in my faith, like on fire or anything. Right. And so I'm talking to a priest. I start going to RCAA and I start going through, and I was like, 
wow, like this makes so much sense. Like this just makes so much sense. And it's like what my soul was missing. Like mm. I like, I, you know, like it's like I had this huge hole when I didn't have any faith. And that's like, OK, like I know God exists now. Now I have a little hole. And then it's like RCA. I was like the whole I needed the church too. you know, mm. like this is what I needed. Um, So, yeah. And then. Yeah. So just some some wild things. I had a in that abusive relationship unfortunately lasted for a while. It was really difficult to get out of it. And then I got pregnant with my second daughter and um who's amazing. And through my pregnancy, when I got pregnant the second time, I also had a friend get pregnant um at the same time and uh she was considering abortion and she actually ended up getting an abortion and she, I was with her through that whole process. And, um, I really felt like I failed. I mm. failed her and I failed her baby. Like I didn't do enough to save her baby. And I got into pro-life work because I was like, I want to save as many babies as I can to wow. make up. I, Cause I, I didn't save that one. And so that's when I began my, my Instagram account. That's when I began speaking out about pro-life stuff. And, then eventually found the other people on Instagram that I now run my TikTok account with. So wow, oh my gosh, what a story! And so I, you know, you're you're finally out of that relationship. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, glory to God. Yes, glory um, to God. I wow. Okay, so let let's backtrack a little yes. bit. So your mom, while you grew up not really like feeling like faith was like a major priority to you mm -hmm. um, earlier on, like your mom was. Oh, a Catholic mom. Yes, she was. She was very devout, very Catholic, yeah. and unfortunately, I gave her a lot of grief about sure. it. Sure, I was a I been was, there. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I think she did her part. But unfortunately, my dad's not Catholic. Mm -hmm. My dad's not religious, so I didn't get that. You know, from okay. my parents. You know, it's really it's nice when you have like two strong Catholic parents, and I didn't have that. Um, not saying that that's the whole reason. I was definitely sure. just like a kind of a wayward child, yeah. <laughs> and. Um, but yeah, she she tried, but so would you say it was into high school that you were starting to consider yourself an atheist? Yes. Yeah. What, what do you think the reason for that was? Uh, you know, I and I'm asking because like I know that there are going to be parents watching this with kids and they're just like heartbroken over their choice, the kids' choices, and yeah. like I I was one of those kids, and not specifically during high school, uh, although I was quite the hooligan. <laughs> uh, I didn't really consider myself agnostic or atheist until after high school. So I'm wondering, you know, in, at the, in those years, like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I think it was just not being surrounded by people who, one, lived out their faith, because I had lots of friends, but I didn't really have, like, any friends that I knew that, like, maybe they went to church, but, like, they didn't really live out their faith day to day. And I think I also just, like didn't have a lot of people really tell me what it was, you know, cause I, I, you know, like people look at like religion as like this, like, Oh, you just kind of like, you just believe in this stuff. And mm -hmm. it's like, no one really told me the why, like, why do we do this? Why do we believe? And I'm sure my mom tried to tell me a few times, but like, it's important to have your peers kind of like form that yeah. or even like people you look up to like teachers or like coaches and that kind of stuff. I think I just had a lack of, just formation by other people besides my mom. <laughs> mm, that That is so hard. And that's why I think like youth groups are so important. Yes, and, you know, there, there's a huge difference between youth group and like Catholic school. Like I went to Catholic school, um, but my peers and I did not really like we weren't doing backflips about religion class, you know. Yeah. Um, but when you're, you're attending a youth group, it's not like there aren't going to be also some negative influences there. But but you have a, a, a larger number of the kids attending that are there because they want to, you know, yeah. or, mm -hmm. or because despite maybe it started because their parents kind of forced them to, or something like the experiences you have in youth group in theory, when it's being done well are about the relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's less classroom, less teaching you, catechizing you. Yeah. Uh, Cause a lot of that stuff is when, when that is devoid of, uh, you know, the relationship part of it, the why, the who, mm -hmm. uh, then it is so easy for it to not matter. And yeah. so I'm, I'm just, you know, it's such a huge advocate for, um, like what you're describing, like it's such a real need for, to see your peers because your peers like are kind of who you measure, who you measure yourself up against are your peers are who you want to accept you. Mm -hmm. Um, and you are not going to care as much about 
you know, depending on the way that you were formed, obviously, but um, you'll be less inclined to care about uh, make a priority out of the thing that your parent cares about if if your peers don't make it look like it matters to them because yeah. you want to fit in with them. You want them to totally. accept you. And um, yeah, man. Yeah. And also thinking about it, like I have an older brother and he identified himself as atheist when he, he was in high school and he's five years older than me. So I was pretty young and I always looked up to him. Mm -hmm. And I think that played a part in it too, you know, like to have your older brother that you look up to identify as atheist, you're like, huh, oh, maybe I should. And like, he's yeah. really smart too. So I'm like, oh, maybe that's the smart thing to do. So I'm sure siblings help too. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially the older sibling yes. thing, you know, yeah. oh, I want them to love me, yeah. accept me. <laughs> I yeah. want them to like me. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't relate because I was the oldest, but, you know, yeah. I, I know how much my younger siblings, even into adulthood, wish they could be like me. Right. Just kidding. Um, no, my, my, my siblings are awesome. Uh, but, okay. And so you you started going to church again and you started, um, you know, as you were, was, was it the um, turning away from abortion? What was like the impetus for you to really start going to, back to the church? Um. You know, honestly, it was like that experience I had with like that, that experience where I was like, oh, okay, God was protecting me. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 I think that was a, a lot of it. Also, I was, I, I went to make my mom happy, you know, sure. like, you know, just, just cause I wanted to be like, oh, I feel bad for giving you a bunch of grief, you know, I'll, I'll yeah. go to church with you now and that kind of stuff. And it was also like kind of a bonding thing. Sure. Um, but yeah, just just more. The more I spent there, the more I was like, okay, yeah, just being chipped away at, like I said, yeah, and and the the protecting you thing, like where you just felt very mm -hmm. tangibly that God was protecting you. Yes, that I, I've I've said it a million times, and I'll say it again. Like you had an experience of God, and nothing can replace that. Mm -mm. Nothing can replace that because no. once you know that there's something there, like what are you going to do? Pretend it's not there? Like, yeah. no, you, you, there's really only one, you know, mentally cognitively sound next yes. step. And that yeah. is to acknowledge the existence. Um, because you can't deny what you, you know, experience is so much about, uh, what we understand about the world, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and I, and I think in atheism, why is it so rampant to like struggle with the question of like, is there a God? Like, well, we can't measure it. It's not a measurable thing. We can't find him in, you know, the atom or in the universe. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like what what you're really searching for is an experience of God, like yes. because that is what that measurement would give you. Yes. That is what you know finding it in a micro finding God in a microscope would give you. Finding God in the universe yeah, in a exactly. telescope would would give you an experience to confirm an idea. Mm -hmm. And and we're missing that. Um, and I think that we are doing a disservice as a church when our focus is not specifically trying to help people. Uh, encounter mm -hmm. an experience of God, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, where there's such a huge emphasis on like teaching the faith before someone has any idea why they should care to yeah, learn about the faith. Or, yeah. So that's, that's so huge. Uh, I love that that was a, a part of that, mm -hmm. um, man. Okay. So, uh, we're going to, we're going to hop into the Kerygma speed round. <laughs> All right, Hannah, are you ready? Uh, <laughs> 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 it's so funny to me how insecure everybody gets. I, I even had Jason ever in here oh last gosh. week and he was like, all like, I don't know. Am I ready? <laughs> um, we'll see. All right. Question number one, who is Jesus to you? Okay. Um, so Jesus to me is my savior. He is my protector. He is fully God and fully human. And he's, he's my dude. Like my dude, like I'm serious. He's like, he's my friend. Yeah, that's beautiful. That I mean, yeah, that's relatable and it's it's real. Like he he doesn't just want to be some, you know. I mean, he is God on the throne, but he yes. is also our our brother. Like yes. we don't call Jesus Father when we pray the Our Father. We're praying to the Father in the mm -hmm. Trinity. Jesus is our bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. He's our bro. And that's not to diminish his dignity or glory at all. It's it's really more that he's inviting us. He's trying to elevate us. Yeah. Uh, so that's beautiful. I love that. No one said that yet, and I and I'm glad that you did. <laughs> all right. Question number two. Okay. Elevator pitch for life as a Christian. Okay. So when you're not a Christian and you're not, you know. Okay. Oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Any, any aspect of our life, you're always going to have a hole. 
Mm. You know, you can't find fulfillment in your relationships. You can't find fulfillment in your children. You can't find uh, fulfillment in money and success. You know, you're, there's always going to be, be like a Jesus sized hole in each and every one of us. And I would say if somebody's really considering like following Jesus, I would say every day for a week, I don't know, a week or two, sit down and say, Jesus, I just want you to show me. Mm -hmm. I want you to, I want you to come in and give me an experience. I want you to, um, I just want to know your presence. And I can bet you, I mean, if not, if you don't have something by the end of that week, you are starting your journey on having something. Mm -hmm. You will encounter Jesus if you sit down, have an open heart and you ask him to give it to you. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's, I, I will, I almost want to provide also to that that like, you know, it was so powerful to me how you, you felt this tangible protection. Um, and really you, you get the opposite of that without the Jesus, oh, yeah. right? Like you yeah. get, you get the, you get this emptiness, you get this mm -hmm. lack of meaning, you get this lack of, you know, protection, mm -hmm. lack of, you know, like, oh, there's, there's a bigger power that it created me and cares for me. So yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Question number three, Hannah. <laughs> Elevator pitch specifically for life as a Catholic. Okay. So when I was in RCA kind of discerning what I want to be, one of the big things for me was I just didn't want to believe in a religion like that was just made by like, you know, Joe Schmo, mm. you know, like you just came up good with guy. Great guy. He's a good guy, but. But not Christ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I mean, like understanding that like Jesus Christ instituted our church. I mean, like that was huge for me. Also, yeah. another huge thing is like mi the miracles and like, especially like the Marian apparitions, like Fatima, like where, you know, thousands of people like witnessed this miracle and had these like spontaneous conversions. I mean, that was huge. It's documented all these like documented Eucharistic miracles, things that have been tested on, like the Tilma of Guadalupe, you know, I mean, like all that stuff was like to my like logical brain was like, okay, yeah, like that's really good evidence for the Catholic church. Absolutely. That was a tremendous charisma speed round, Hannah. Thank you. you nailed it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm sure you just converted a bunch of people. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to your story. So you, um, I, I want to talk a little bit, if it's okay, about the friend of yours that did end up having an abortion. Because gosh. Yes. I know for me, um, when I care deeply about someone, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even if I don't care about them, like it's a tragedy if something bad happens or whatever. But like when I when it's in my uh, uh, perception, if I'm if I'm directly related to the situation and I care about someone who's suffering, struggling, or or you know, worst of all, like making devastating choices, like it breaks my heart. Um, and you do sometimes. You just want to be able to grab them and shake them and be like. Unless it's a baby, uh, <laughs> just be like, "Why are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> You're clearly headed down a wrong path." You know. Mm -hmm. um, so how long was that? You, I mean, you said you were with her through that whole process, uh, from where she kind of discovered she was pregnant mm -hmm. to ending up going through with that. Like, what? How long of a process was that? Um, it was about two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's a grueling two weeks. I it have to imagine. It was grueling two weeks, and it's like I'm always checking my phone for her text. Like, what's the next update? Like, uh, where are we at? How is she feeling about it? Because it, it ebbed and flowed. I mean, at one point we were like really like, oh yeah, we're you know you're gonna have a baby and like you know, all this stuff, and then all of a sudden it was like, no, I'm gonna get an abortion, and then it was back, and it's was, it was, so it was really it was really tough. What and a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, it was really tough, and I mean I know her like she's one of my best friends and I knew that how it was going to affect her if mm -hmm. she did. And so it's hard to like, you know, get other people to like understand that. It's mm -hmm. like, I know you, I know how this is going to affect you. And I know that it's not, it's not right. I mean, it's not right period, but it's not right for you specifically right now. Yeah. Yeah. And first, I mean, I, I, I guess I, I would have liked to have said this earlier in our episode and I, and I didn't think of it until right now, but like, if you're watching this or listening to this and mm -hmm. you have had an abortion, um, like, man, God loves you, you know? Um, and there's so many opportunities for healing. Like what Hannah was mentioning earlier, the pregnancy center yes. offers healing ministries. Like, um, I think a lot of times we're afraid to admit that something we did was wrong because we don't want to have to face ourselves with that. 
And the amazing thing is that like, you're not going to tell God anything a, that he doesn't already know mm -hmm. and B like, you're not going to surprise him and you're not going to be like, he's not, he's not going to hear anything you have to say or see any of your sins and think to himself, Oh, she's not good enough for me. Or he's not good enough mm -hmm. for me. Like God just wants to pick you up, give you a huge hug and just mm -hmm. tell you he loves you. Yeah. Um, and so if, if that's you like reach out, um, mm -hmm. we'll have ways to interact with Hannah via her like Instagram and TikTok. We'll have links to that in the show notes. Um, and then we'll also maybe provide some show notes uh, or some links to a couple other resources. Um, but yeah, I just want to highly encourage you, like, don't be afraid of God's love because um, it will never run out and it is powerful and beautiful and it's what we all need for a gazillion different reasons. Mm -hmm. So um, that having been said, like in, in your friend's case, um, there was like, did she tell you before she did it that she was going to do it? Or did she tell you after it had happened? Like, okay, I just did it. Um, so, so when she originally came to me, she just found out she was pregnant and okay. then we, we discussed that. But when she actually, you know, went to the clinic and did it, she, it was like afterwards. So that was really heartbreaking too. Yeah. Cause at that point it's like, you can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. I know. And, and I mean, like, I know, like, I don't want to sound like it's all about me, but I, I did grieve her baby. Like of course. I grieved the loss of her baby. And another God thing that happened is, um, you know, like not long after, I think three weeks after that, I found out I was pregnant. So it, I mean, it, I grieved that that process that we would have went through, like, you know, friends together, pregnant, like both yeah. both in pretty difficult situations. I mean, but yeah. And and it's just it's so hard when you're like you're trying to help someone mm -hmm. and then they, they, they just don't accept your help, you know? Yeah. And you uh, where you were at in life when this all happened, you were still a student. Yep. Uh, what were you studying then? Then I had chosen to study sonography, ultrasound tech. Even before? Um, so I changed my major um, after my do my first daughter was born, but before I was pregnant with my second. Okay. What yes. was the original major? I was in computer animation. No way. Yeah. That's such <laughs> totally a 180. Different. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I went to Ohio State. Originally, I got in for engineering, changed my major to computer animation, and then changed my major and left Ohio State. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, I mean, do you hope to ever do any, like, are you a digital artist in general? Is yeah, I, I still love to draw. I'll draw on my computer and on Photoshop and that kind of stuff. But, like, not, I don't do it seriously right now. I would love to do it seriously maybe later, but for now, like, this is what I'm called to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so I, I wanted to go here with the story because, like, you know, you hear so often that, women need the option for abortion to make anything of their lives, mm, mm -hmm. right? Like, are you, are you supposed to, uh, you know, just let the baby be born and like ruin your life? And, um, and I'm just like, I feel like that's a false dichotomy. Like th those are not the, you know, two exclusive options yeah. here. Um, and I just love that you're an example of someone who is, still working towards goals your goals have shifted because your priorities have shifted yeah um but like you're still studying and you're going to be a sonographer and you're going to help other women um in the same way that you were helped when when you were pregnant mm -hmm. unexpectedly yeah um but but you're doing it you have two daughters and you're in school and mm -hmm. that's amazing thank you <laughs> yeah congratulations like you're killing it <laughs> thank you yeah and i mean i know what you you mean cuz when i found out i was pregnant with my first daughter i literally thought that i would have to drop out of college like i literally thought that my life was going to be over i would never graduate and which sounds incredibly insane now because i know when i graduate i'm going to be holding both my daughters mm. you know but i had that idea and i think it's a societal thing oh it is i mean and we, it's a lie yeah and we think that our life has to go in this exact order you know we have to you know go to college graduate meet our you know ideally we should get married but i mean you have to like get married at this age and have kids at this age before mm -hmm. this age and it's like 
you know, like everyone's path is different mm-hmm. and, and it's okay. And there's so much help out there. Like there's so much help for, you know, young moms, uh, single parents. And I had no idea about the help. And when I was shown it, I was really amazed. And it really, it really gave me a good push to be like, no, your ideas about what you think is going to happen are totally wrong. Wow. Yeah. And so, uh, tell us a little bit about that experience you had with a sonographer. Um, and you know, you, you, you mentioned like looking at your baby, Um, was such a pivotal thing, but like specifically the sonography, Mm because you told me before we started the show how how kind and loving she was. Oh, yeah. um, Talk a little bit about that experience. Yeah, she was super kind. I mean, from every direction, I was having people say, like I had friends that tell me, yeah, you should get an abortion. I had friends that were telling me, no, you really shouldn't, or like people like my mom. And sitting down with her and talking, she was like so nonjudgmental. She was so loving, so supportive, so kind, um, really just wanted me to make I mean she wanted me to have all the options and like really like she was like I want you to feel good about whatever choice you make also I'm not religious at this point but she asked me she was like can I pray for you Mm. and for some reason like that question was just like so so like beautiful like someone asked if they could pray for me I mean like it was just it was just really wonderful and she was just super supportive she's still sometimes messages me and she's like, Hey, how are you doing? Like, how are your girls? Like, can I have a picture updates? That's amazing. Yeah. She's, she's really great. And what a, what a cool thing like that you would have such a positive experience with that, that impacted you in such a deep way that you would want to now make your life about the same thing that she's doing. Like, Like you were so inspired by how amazing she was that you want to be that for other people now. Yes, I I really do. I would love to work at a pregnancy center. I'd love to be there when women are considering abortion and be able to not only just like be the person that shows them their child, yeah. but also be that person to walk with them through it. I would love to do that. I would love to share my experience with people and just like be that supportive person that I had. That's so beautiful. Um, okay. So, uh, I don't know, uh, what the most recent thing you heard was uh, about this. uh, I don't know, like if this is going to progress between when we're recording this and when this episode gets released. Um, but in this moment, uh, Roe versus Wade is Mm -hmm. up for grabs in a way, like, like in a way that gosh, all the marches for life that I have attended in the U S Capitol and the marches for life that people have been attending for decades now, to overturn Roe versus Wade and every single year it's like this is the year we're gonna do it it's it's time God's gonna work a miracle and and then it inevitably doesn't end up happening and uh you know we're we're close or then closer than we've ever been Mm -hmm. uh and and there's a real real possibility that this question about abortion is going to come down to the state level if this pans out that's the way it should be yeah um a hundred percent uh, but one of the other things that was being uh, raised as a question in this is um, whether or not uh, they should allow uh, women who are considering abortion, I think it's like as of um, uh, 22 weeks and on, uh, should be allowed to watch the Catholic Weird Stuff segment. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, regardless of what stage you're in in pregnancy, regardless of of whether or not you're married, regardless of how many times you've been pregnant, um, no matter what choices you've made in your life, you should be allowed to watch the Catholic Weird Stuff segment. So here we go. Catholic Weird Stuff. Why do they do the things that they do? Let's learn some Catholic Weird Stuff. It's a boy. Welcome back to the Catholic Weird Stuff segment, everybody. I am your host, Nick, and I'm here with Hannah. And we are going to talk about some Catholic Weird Stuff today. Um, you know, Hannah mentioned earlier uh, the miraculous medal that mm-hmm. God, like, just, he did some some nice stuff with. You know, he's like, hey, yep. I'm here. Here's your miraculous medal. Mary's with you. Um, why am I doing this Trump thing? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, all right. So. Yeah, if you're just listening and not watching, that made no sense. But I was just doing this weird gesture that, like, I don't know, reminds me of it. Now I'm all confused about what I'm doing, and I don't know what looks like Trump anymore. The lines are blurred. If the lines are blurred between, like, yourself and Trump, and you're just not sure who you are anymore, you know you have some problems. (laughs) Anyways, today we're going to talk about Mary. Um, I'm going to mention a couple things I get super stoked about with Mary. Uh, Hannah, I want I want to hear what you got to say about Mary. Um, you would, you had mentioned that you want to talk a little bit about like her role as an intercessor um, in prayer and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, 
Uh, to start with, for me, I just love the idea that Jesus in the New Testament is referred to as the new Adam. And if you have a new Adam, mm -hmm. you're going to have a new Eve, especially if you, if it, you know, it logically flows. But on top of that, all of the incredible things that the Catholic Church has consistently taught for 2,000 years, mm -hmm. it just clicks. It makes sense, right? And then even if you consider all the more so that the book of Genesis, there is a prophecy about Mary in I think it's chapter 3, verse 15. Let's see if I nailed that. I'm, I've been really bad lately about like almost getting it, but then just being slightly <laughs> off. Um, so I'm super excited to find out if I'm going to like crash and burn on this or if, or if I nailed it. Um, all right. So chapter 3, verse 15. <laughs> I nailed it. Finally, <laughs> Brenna, put this in the calendar. I nailed it. Okay. So, um, so God, you know, he's like reprimanding Adam and Eve, like, Hey, y'all blew it. I gave you one freaking rule and you blew it. Um, and then he turns to, to the serpent and he says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. And what woman is he talking about? He's talking about Mary. That's a spoiler. Um, and between your seed and her seed. And so, like, that's pretty epic. And you might be thinking to yourself, woman, that's kind of broad. That's, that's pretty generic. How's that about Mary, Nick? Well, let me tell you how that's about Mary, you. Um, so in the Gospel of John, Jesus wastes no words, like none of them. Everything he says is with a, with a purpose. He's a master teacher, okay? Uh, so... You might have heard there was there was this wedding that Jesus attended. It was also where he performed his first miracle in the Gospel of John. Um, and so Jesus was invited to this wedding. When the wine failed, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, oh, woman. He calls her woman. Why would, like, Jesus is not a disrespectful son. He's perfect. Like, he wouldn't disrespect her. He is like highlighting for the world and then the generations that would follow reading these gospel passages. He's highlighting this is the woman. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not the only other instance we see or hear about the woman. Um, anyways, he says, woman, what have uh, what has this to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And so his mom, being the amazing Jewish mother she was, she basically, uh, or I guess she'd be Christian technically because she accepted Jesus in a way that none of us ever literally will. But um, uh, so Mary basically brushes off what Jesus said. Uh, she turns to the servants and she says, do whatever he tells you. And like, so she's like, yeah, you're going to perform a miracle. Hang on guys. Uh, and, and I just, I love this idea that like, like who's, who's going to be sassy with Jesus, his mom. mom. Uh, and she also happens to be woman. And you know, if you wonder like, why do Catholics ever pray to Mary? It's like, well, Hey, I'm not allowed to be sassy with Jesus, <laughs> but if anyone is allowed to be sassy with Jesus, it's Mary. And if he's going to tell me, no, I'm going to go to mama and I'm going to be like, Hey, he said no to me. Could you talk to him? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but, but it's that idea that like, there is precedence for, for her intercession and, um, like she did it here. She interceded for this party. And then it was through her intercession mm -hmm. that they were able to keep partying and having wine. Um, and so I think that is flipping beautiful. And then uh, the final instance where we see her being referred to as this woman, uh, not final, uh, actually, there's a couple more uh, on the cross, super huge. Jesus is hanging on the yes. cross. Who's at the foot of the cross? Mary and John. And he says to her, woman. Behold your son. Why is he calling her woman? Because he's saying, yeah, this is, everyone remember, this is the woman from the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Woman, behold your son. Um, and and that was, he was kind of transferring, John in that moment like represented us, mm -hmm. the people he loves. Um, and he was, he was, you know, transferring, like he was, he was giving us adoptive rights to her in a sense. Um, and then, and then finally, the, the other instance I wanted to point out is in the book of Revelation. Uh, when uh, in the chapter, chapter 12 is a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, again, woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and her head on a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and she 
cried out in her pangs of birth in anguish for delivery. Um, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. Not my point. The point is she's woman being crowned in heaven. Mm -hmm. And um, But what I love is like the Bible wasn't written the way we see it today, right? So you don't necessarily have like the, the gospel writers, the, uh, the epistle writers, they weren't like putting proper punctuations and like chapters and verse numbers. Um, that's for us. And it's a great thing we have that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you take that away and you read it the way it was written. If you were right above where it says it makes a reference to that great sign, uh, it says, then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. And there were flashes of lightning, loud noises, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. You, you have to read that that way. Mm -hmm. You got to read the, the verse 19 of chapter 11 into chapter 12, because holy crap, what you see there... The Ark of the Covenant, which had gone missing, mm -hmm. um, well, this sign was essentially showing Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. And that is magnificent. That is so beautiful. I love that. So there's so much more. I'm, I'm such yeah. a Mary geek, um, but I, I won't bore you now. Maybe maybe we'll do an episode <laughs> specifically on Mary eventually. But like, man, there's so much power in like understanding the connections of between mm -hmm. like the words, why certain words were used um, and... I just think it's so beautiful. And, uh, you know, you, you wanted to talk about intercession and that's why I wanted to reference that wedding of Cana, yeah. uh, or wedding at Cana, a story where, where Mary interceded in such a blatant way in scripture. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I just, I just said a lot of words. Yeah, no. And to, to the point of some of the, the passages you read, I've talked to people who are non-dominational or Protestant and they're like, Oh, well that, you know, the wedding at Cana is just about like respecting your mother or respecting your parents, like filling that commandment. And I'm like, that's too simplistic. I mean, <laughs> that's if so we're, shallow. If we're talking about like the word of God, I mean, sure. It could like have that, you know, thrown in there too. But I mean, there's going to be multiple meanings. There's going to be multiple ways to take that. And we know that what everything that, that is written in Holy scripture and everything that is said by Jesus is so profound. It's, it's not that simple. It's not just like, Oh, here's your mother. You know, you John take, take her. Yeah. It's, no, it's like, this is all of our, this is our mother. And so I think if we really believe that, you know, Holy Scripture is the true word of God, I, you can't boil it down to just like, eh, it just means that, you yeah. know, it means lit it's it's just about like respecting your mom. It's a very, very convenient way to butcher scripture uh, on the altar of me not having to change my life. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I hate to put it so bluntly, but like, gosh, it drives me nuts. Like Mary's our mother. Mm hmm. Like Mary's our mother. Mary's your mother. Like if you're not Catholic, she's still your mom. Yeah. You're just ignoring her, and that yeah. sucks. And I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's super sad. Um, like I, I ignored her. I ignored her and God for a while when I was an agnostic atheist, right? Yeah. Like, um, it, it's it's a tragedy because like there's so much richness to be mm -hmm. had in life here and now, like heaven on earth. Like that's a very yes. real thing. Yeah. Um, Christ came to bring heaven to earth, and uh, and we obviously we'll not see the fulfillment of that until the last day um, when when we have a new heaven and a new earth. But we can we can get glimpses of that. We can have pieces of that that we can experience day to day now, mm -hmm. obviously in the way we love each other, um, you know, the, the way we treat one another, like we can make earth more heaven like mm -hmm. in the way that we treat each other. But also like the saints, the angels, God, like we can have... A, a relationship with all of that now mm -hmm. and it can and bless should. us immensely and we should absolutely uh so yeah yeah and i and i also think like if you're struggling you know with mary like same with like i said with jesus like take a day every day you know just ask her can you just give me yeah. something like an experience i just want to know if you're present or not you know yeah. i think and i think that'll make the world of difference that's beautiful absolutely and um, you know, Jesus loved her, still does. Yep. And so you don't want to be that guy <laughs> that doesn't love probably the person that Jesus loves the most 
and he probably does. It's his mama, so <laughs> no two ways around it. All right, that was a great Catholic Weird Stuff segment. Hannah, thank you for joining me yeah, for that. No problem. Um, okay, so let's get into like what you're doing. So um, mm-hmm. you obviously you're studying. You're you're a mother of two beautiful daughters, um, but you you're doing some some stuff online that I think we need to talk about. Um, so specifically, you. Actually, tell me the story. Like before we started recording the show, I asked you about this. How did you get into the TikTok ministry, and what does that look like for you? Yeah, so I started my pro life Instagram account. Originally started it because I wanted a anonymous account, um, which is not anonymous anymore, obviously, and um, so I could not get bashed for like my pro life <laughs> views. <laughs> but um, and then I met some really great ladies. Um, you know, there's five of us on the account and they started this account. They asked me if I wanted to be a part of it on TikTok. We're like, we're seeing a lot of people get on TikTok for, you know, pro-life things and other things like that. And we're like, we, we think we could do it too. And so we we just formed it and it, it really, it did not take off at first, but it really took off when it took off. Yeah. So you guys have now, uh, see, I'm still an old man when it comes to figuring out how TikTok works here. Okay, you guys have right now 23 and a half thousand followers. Yes. You have 765.1 thousand likes of your videos. Um, that is not insignificant. That is really exciting stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've had a couple of videos. I'm going to turn the volume down on this. Um, this is one of Hannah's TikToks, actually, that you just started hearing there, if that came through the mic. Um, anyways, so... Some of your videos have gotten a lot of views. Uh, So I'm looking at one right here that got 10,000 views. You have another one that I saved here. Uh, That's not it. Uh, 20,000 views or likes on this one. Um, And then, wait, where's the views versus the likes on this? See, I'm such an old guy. Oh, right there. Holy yeah. moly. Yeah. Okay. So we got one here that's 35.8 thousand views. Mm-hmm. Um, one that's 89,000 views. One that's 70,000 views. Uh, Hannah, you're kind of killing it. I mean, you're you're doing the dang thing. You're Thank you're getting this, this pro-life message out there in such a significant way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to encourage everybody to go check out uh, this account on TikTok. If you're on TikTok, uh, it's at the Pro Life Hive, and um, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. But my goodness, what a cool thing! And, and before we started the show, uh, you were showing me a couple of these videos that have some of the most likes or, or watches, and they are really great. Um, like it's really leveraging a lot of the the things, the the styles of video and messaging that are going viral, mm-hmm. and and then providing good, true, and beautiful messages yeah. in in that style. Um, and I, th- I just think it's being done so well. Thank you. This is so, so excellent. Yeah, what we kind of try to do is we take these these uh, trends, like things that are trending on TikTok, whether it's like, I don't know, if you've ever been on TikTok, you know that they have music and they have sounds and those things trend and go viral. And so we take those trends and we're trying to like flip them on their head and give them like a pro-life spin. So like no matter what the trend is, we try to like frame it in a way that like sends out our message. Hmm. So that's kind of our framework of how we, how we do things. Yeah, that's awesome. So you said that at first it didn't really take off. What yeah. was it like? Like how, how often were you creating content and was it, you know, was it discouraging? Is like, oh, should I, should I keep doing this? Yeah. Well, okay. So TikTok has this thing called shadow banning. So if you're shadow banned, it, they don't push out your video and you can get shadow banned for tons of different reasons. Even just being pro-life can get you shadow banned. So we had our first account got shadow banned and we were making several videos a day, getting maybe 30 likes on each of them. And we eventually just scrapped that account and made a new one because wow. sometimes you don't get unshadow banned. So, and then when we made our new one, that one started going quick. And I don't know if it, I don't know why. <laughs> That's so interesting. I don't know what happened. Maybe it's just the algorithm decided you're shadow banned and you're not. So, huh. yeah. It's, it's kind of terrifying that so arbitrarily this yeah. robot can just be like, I know, nah, not you, not you, yeah. not, not your views. <laughs> oh man. Well, you know what, Hannah, if you guys, if your pro-life hive were to start making posts on the Awaken Catholic app, 
we would not shadow ban you. That's that's nice. That's and nice. Just to, to be clear, there's a button for that. We won't hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. I'll keep yeah. that in mind. Um, man. Okay. And so once once you started that second one, how long did it take for that to really like? Uh, we just started that one. I want to say July 2020. Okay. So wow. I mean, in less than a year, we've gotten 23,000 followers, you know, I don't even know how many you said likes, like, um, but that we, we reached 20,000, I think within the first six months. And then like the last six months has been like the last 3000 followers. So we really took off. Yeah. So you have 23 and a half thousand followers mm-hmm. and then 765.1 thousand likes. Yes. Yeah. That's like more than three quarters of a million. Yeah. It's crazy. And yeah. I mean, we got the first 20,000 of our followers in the first six months, which is insane. Wow. Yeah. That's not like typical. No, it's not typical. <laughs> <laughs> it's not t- especially not for like the type of content we're making. Yeah. No. Are you finding that you get a lot of backlash in comments or anything like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every day. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, so fun. <laughs> yeah, we we had to field some of that, even just trying to promote our event uh, called YB Catholic. Yeah. Um, man, we got we got some fire in those comments. Yeah. Uh, so I can't even imagine like the pro life cause is almost touchier than the idea of Catholicism. Um, yeah. That must be really hard. And you guys post very frequently. So yes, we do. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, more than half of our comments are not. People How do you deal agree. with them? Do you just ignore them? Usually, yeah. Unless, like, there's an option on TikTok that you can reply to a comment with a video. Oh, interesting. And so sometimes if there's, like, something I really want to address, I'll, like, reply with a video. But usually just ignore it. I mean, you're just going to waste your time and energy by... Yeah. And people, they say the exact same thing every single time. So right. I'll, I'll address the same argument maybe 10 times a day for the rest of my life. You know? I mean, mm-hmm. there's no way you can just, you know, address everything. Yeah. Do you see yourself doing this for the rest of your life? No. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, I, I'm gonna be too old. <laughs> I'm already too old. I have the other girls on my account. I'm one of the oldest. The other girls on my account, like I had to ask them how to use TikTok. I was like, I feel like an old lady at 22 years at years old because I cannot do it. I could not figure it out. At well, first. if you feel like an old lady at 22, <laughs> I'm in real trouble at 33. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that does make me feel better because TikTok to me is just so yeah. darn confusing. It is very confusing. Um, yeah. I still to this day have never posted a talk or a tick, uh, <laughs> which I'm, I guarantee you I'm not saying any of that correctly. But uh, anyways, wow. Okay. And then your Instagram, that's your personal pro-life. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what would you say is the difference between the way you handle both of those? Um. So Instagram is obviously a different medium. I do a lot of very in-depth posts. Like I will take an argument and I will just like run it through. I will run it through like why this pro-choice argument doesn't work, why it's like a fallacy or like, you know, um, and then a counter argument for it. So I do a lot of that or like a lot of in-depth posts. Like I did um, the connection, the link between sexual assault and abortion. I did the mm. link between sex trafficking and abortion. Um, so I really like the research kind of stuff um, for my personal account. And also it's like, it's it's my self ownership of that account. I'm the only person that runs it. So it's it's nice, like I can do whatever I want with this mm-hmm. one. Yeah. What what are some of the biggest misconceptions do you think about that, that run rampant um, about like abortion or the pro-life cause or... Yeah. So the, I mean, the biggest one is that they're not human beings. I mean, like when I start a debate, we do several debates with our, um, our account with other accounts. And when I start a debate, the first thing I do is I provide the evidence that these are human beings and they're alive. Cause once you, once you um, start the foundation of this is a living human being, the rest of the argument is them trying to defend why it's okay to kill a living human being, mm. which I find is really difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it should be. <laughs> it should be yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not sometimes, but yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest miscon- misconception. Also, just like the misconceptions about pro-lifers in general, like we don't care about children, you know, yeah. we just want to control women and that kind of stuff, which is why I like my account of, a f- you know, five Gen Z women, you know, trying to tell people like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, that's personal witness is so important. And, and I love that you guys are doing it in a way that like, if you didn't 
take the time to like read what you're posting and you just kind of are flipping through, I, I wouldn't know that, oh, this is a Christian thing. Yeah. Right. It, and that's a good thing to yeah. me because it's not, it's not crappier, which is so easy for Christian things to mm -hmm. be. It's, it's so easy to yeah. accidentally be crappier than the secular alternatives or whatever. Um, and, and the way it's executed, you guys just look like tick talking girls. Like it, it looks like a, mm -hmm. a, a typical thing. And then as soon as you dive in a, a, at all to the messaging and what's being conveyed, it's like, oh, wow, like yeah. this is, we need this. Yeah. This is so important. <laughs> yeah. And I think it also helps like all five of us, like some of us have differing political views and some of us, like, I know at one point, one of our girls was atheist. She had, she's since converted, but when she started the account, she was atheist. So we had like wow. a bunch of different, she was an atheist that was pro-life. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I was pro-life before I converted too. So I was atheist and wow. pro-life at a point too. Um, but yeah, so I really like how we all, bring something different, even just politically, you know, like, or spiritually, you know, some of us are Catholic, some of us aren't, you know? So I think that helps. Cause I mean, my videos aren't going to impact the same videos that the other girls videos is. And mm -hmm. so when we have all of that, that expands who we can reach to, you know? Yeah, absolutely. If you could, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up with this. If you could tell viewer or listener right now that is, is unsure about the pro-life cause or or is maybe themselves pro-choice like mm -hmm. what is one thing you would want to tell a viewer or listener yeah i would say obviously like i said before you know the pro-choice standpoint is always going to be you're defending whether it's okay to kill a living human being because we know scientifically and biologically that you know human embryos and fetuses are human beings just like you and me just smaller and younger um and secondly, I mean, if we're going to be consistent about equality, if we're going to be consistent about non-discrimination, saying that some human beings don't deserve rights, don't deserve um, their life, other people can pick and choose whether they get to live or not, um, deciding if they have value based on with whether they're wanted or not, that's always going to be inherently discriminatory. Mm -hmm. That's not promoting equality, which a lot of people on the pro-choice side are very very invested in equality. And if we're going to be consistent, then we have to say that all human beings deserve rights. All mm. human beings deserve equality. All human beings should be valuable, whether they are wanted or not. Preach. Thanks. So good. <laughs> I love that. That's so important. Amen. Oh, man, Hannah, it's been great it's been it's been really great to talk to you yeah. about this um thank you for the work that you're doing yeah. uh keep up the good work and keep up with those studies because there are women there that are going to need your love and support in the pregnancy centers in the future um and thank you for your yes to god uh for this mission and for your yes to your daughters um and yeah really appreciate it yeah i appreciate it too thank you so much for having it i've, I've enjoyed it a oh lot. i'm glad yeah. it's been enjoyable <laughs> <laughs> oh man and if for you watching or listening it's been enjoyable thanks for sticking with us and if you want to be a part of what makes these types of conversations possible as well as all the other things happening here at awaken catholic then consider uh joining the awaken nation by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate uh, make sure to get the awaken catholic app where hannah is going to start posting pro-life stuff uh, <laughs> that we are not going to shadow ban <laughs> Just kidding. No pressure. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, uh, awesome. God bless you guys. Before you go, I just need you to know that Jesus loves you. Amen. This show and all media on Awakened Catholic is made possible by the Awakened Nation and the Hollow app. The Awakened Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate. Hollow is the only audio-guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hollow every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hollow.app/awaken.